All right, guys, Rich here from the RC Network, and this is going to be build update number two on my Axial Yeti XL kit version. Now, I've been hard at work getting this kit all built up for you guys, and I want to uh, just kind of give you a status update on where I stand. Now, I have uh, pretty much built everything that's included with the kit, with the exception of painting the body on it and also uh, gluing up the wheels and tires, kind of waiting on that for a little bit later. But... I wanted to give you guys kind of uh, where I stand on this. I need to uh, install some electronics badly, and that's kind of where I'm sitting at right now. So I have a couple of different options coming in, and I wanted to do the right electronics for this huge uh, monster buggy. Uh, of course, Axel calls this a 1.8 scale, but it is definitely closer to 1.6 scale um, because it is just massive. Um, I actually just built the shocks and I was quite surprised at the size of these shocks. Uh, these shocks are probably the absolute largest uh, shocks I have built uh, for an RC. So actually nice to uh, uh, build such a large scale shop because it's they're quite easy to work on. So a lot easier than a lot of tent scale shocks out there. Now I will, in a little bit later in this video, bring this up closer so you guys can check out uh, just how large uh, those shocks are. So. Um, but I do have some electronics coming in, and I need to definitely get those installed. I've actually already put together um, pretty much everything uh, that's included in the kit, like I said earlier. Um, just got little bits and pieces, like I got the servo uh, um, arm and you know just little bits and pieces that um, I need to get mounted. So um, I am uh, just got the servo in. I have the motor on its way here. already have the ESC. Of course, I got batteries and the receivers are actually already mounted inside there. Going to be running an Airtronics receiver inside of this nice XL. And I can't wait to run this thing. So um, that's kind of where we stand right now. Let's see if we can get the cage off here and show you guys um, kind of what it looks like underneath. Now, the cage system on this is a little bit different from the uh, uh, standard tent size version. The rear of the... Um, body actually gets mounted directly to it so it's not a quick release it does get mounted so it is either only going to be an up or down situation you can't take the body off without removing uh, the rear mount uh, the front is just held in by um, those body clips so one thing that is a little bit different on the xl uh, kit version is you have this nice little um, uh, tire stand right there. I believe it's actually included with the RTR, but you'd have to purchase an extra wheel and tire. Uh, the kit version actually includes it. So pretty nice there. Um, of course, on the cage here, you get that nice uh, fire extinguisher. The flip side, you get a little um, fuel filler um, little cap there. And on the other side, it actually has a mount for um, actually attaching a hose to if you want to. So pretty cool that they included that. They didn't have to, so they could have just left alone, but they made it good for us. So um, that's the cage, massive cage. And now we're here with the chassis, and this thing uh, has really turned out pretty nice. Um, of course, the upgrades you're seeing, uh, definitely those anodized uh, plates that go on either side of the rear trailing arms. Um, I kind of covered the uh, uh, CVJs that are included with this thing. Nice, big, burly, eight-scale sized um, uh, 17 millimeter hubs there, so really, really nice. Um, on up here, let's take a look at this thing. God, this thing's heavy. So those are the shocks. Good God. Um, now, they do have an option of a piggyback cap or a regular cap. I chose the piggyback just because it kind of looks cool. Completely non-functional. They actually just have a screw that goes up the underside, and it just bolts straight to the cap. So no functionality whatsoever, just some pretty cool look. So, but just the overall length of those things is just ridiculous. Um, now the front and rears are identical in length. There's no difference in the length of them, but they have a little bit different uh, on the internals. The fronts, I'll put this down before I get a cramp in my arm from the weight of it. The fronts actually have um, different pistons than the rears. Uh, the fronts are riding on four hole 1.4 millimeter holes. That's the stock setup. And the rears are running on six hole 1.4 millimeter holes. Now there's several options in the kit and I chose just a stock setup, 30 weight in the front, 10 weight in the rear. So uh, it should be pretty nice. And there's also different uh, spring rates on all four springs 
for both front and rear. So different colors for the uppers versus the lowers on all four shocks. So pretty cool uh, that they're including all that in the kit and just giving you some options there. Um, other than that, uh, as far as the rear um, sway bar, let me grab this thing up here again for you guys. You're seeing there, it's a little bit small, but it actually attaches right there to the trailing arm on up, very stiff, so you're able to um, actually, just a little bit, it'll start to give um, once you start putting some uh, pressure on it. So there's the huge uh, rear fuel tank or scale fuel tank, um, but very, very kind of large design, probably a little over four inches by three inches, and a good uh, solid one inch on the inside. However, there is a, an internal post uh, directly in the center. I think someone was asking a question about that. So you might be able to uh, dremel that off, not mount the post, and use that entire thing if you need a third battery or something. So uh, but pretty cool design. As far as the rear of this thing, I mean, huge and burly. I mean, uh, this thing should do pretty well. Another question I had was on the motor mount. You know, why not a an aluminum one? I get that. They, there is several out there that are available. Uh, but Axel actually is using the hardest plastic I've ever seen. It's almost like a graphite-type uh, plastic. Uh, super strong. It should do the trick, I'm hoping. And uh, on down the line, we'll definitely test that thing out. So I have a pretty large motor coming in this for, the, for this uh, XL kit. And I can't wait to check out some of the electronics that I have planned for this thing. Well, guys, that is going to be it for update number two of my XL kit. If you have any questions about this kit or anything else, uh, feel free to post that down below. Also, check out my Facebook page and also my RC Crawler build thread. I'm going to have that down in the video description so you can check out more footage of this thing in photo form. Well, that's it, guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put this on on down below and as always thumbs up and subscribe that's it for now guys over and out